Welcome back. Continuing the news. Some workers who provide critical services experience life-threatening dangers as they carry out their job. Today, our reporter Herman Green begins a TVJ News series, The Hazards of Service, looking at the dangers of some of these jobs. We begin with the story of firefighters. One member of the Jamaica Fire Brigade who was almost burned to death tells his story. While most persons try to get out of a burning building, firefighters push their way in. This signifies us one of the many life-threatening dangers members of the Jamaica Fire Brigade face on a daily basis. Now, no one is more familiar with this than firefighter Tennyson McFarlane. On a scale of 1 to 10, the hazards we face is at full 10 on a daily basis. He was at one point pronounced dead at hospital after being severely burnt while responding to a house fire in 2015. However, three years later, he lives to tell the tale. August 2 that year, Mr. McFarlane and a crew from the York Fire Station responded to a fire call in Rawlington Town. His team and two other units responded. One of the units was pulled to refill, to replenish the tank, or was put into pump action. So while we are there pumping and going through the building, I came upon a room, a bedroom to be exact. Upon entering, I realized there was a cylinder in the bedroom. He said they put out all flames in the immediate area and cooled down the cylinder. They left the room and returned shortly after, where McFarlane was greeted by an explosion. In that explosion, all I saw was fire coming my way. The cylinder ignited, picked up a blaze because it was leaking in the building, in the entire building which I was in. I was trained properly, hot air rise, so automatically I got down. Based on his training, he said he felt his way along the fire hose to get out of the building. That's when he realized his flesh was melting off him like candle wax. I received facial burns, complete facial burns. I received burns to both hands. I received burns to my leg, up to my groin. Whilst in the fire, I had a split second decision to make, save the face or save the groin. And I decided to save the groin. As a result, the groin is still intact, but the face suffered bitterly. His brother, a fellow firefighter, used a unit to take him to the Kingston Public Hospital. 33% of his body had third-degree burns, another 10% fourth-degree burns. His relatives say he was burnt beyond recognition and was even pronounced dead by medical officials. He was eventually revived. He was treated locally for several weeks, but with no significant progress, his relatives and the fire brigade decided to send him overseas to the Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami, Florida. The motor for Jackson is where miracles, miracles happen. And miracles did happen. I mean, God be the glory. They took me there fully handicapped. They took me through some surgeries and some procedures, and I'm now 90% functional in one hand and 85% in the other. And I went up with zero functions in both hands. Amputation was being considered. He is now back at work after numerous reconstructive surgeries. Therapy treatments continue locally. The harsh reality is that other firefighters face a similar danger each time they suit up responding to a call from the public. And that is just one of the many instances. We have had electrocutions. There are some persons who run illegal light and when we put water to building like those, the voltage come back at us. Um, there, there, there are persons with, with aggressive animals in the yard that attack us when we go to work. There are different hazards like building maintenance in terms of the prevention is on it now, but there are some buildings that should have been written off that haven't been written off. Some nag and block mix, no steel construction, so you know, so those collapse on numerous occasions. I've had co workers where buildings have fallen and them, walls have fallen and them. He says while firefighters accept the dangers of this essential service, more needs to be done to support them. I'm not bashing the country, but there's very little resources to deal with burns in Jamaica. We do not have a burn unit. And that's the first disadvantage for us as firefighters. Second disadvantage for us is we have to get over 30% percent third degree burn to be compensated. One in every 20 persons survive 30% third degree burn. So they are literally saying to us as firefighters, if they don't die, there's nothing for you to cut. For TVJ News, I'm Herman Green.